Russell Crowe and I would like to welcome you to our online service video. Whether you are watching this for the first time or the umpteenth time, you are very welcome. Okay, Russell said, think back to when you were last with a group of people. It may have been at a meal time or at a social event. You may have been in a discussion group or on a course or at school or at work. I know, it could have even been a Zoom call. Everybody wants to have their turn at speaking and so are all talking at the same time. Shh, Russell, nobody can hear what I'm saying. Oh, OK. Russell said he wants to speak too. He wants people to hear him. Well, I understand that, Russell, I do, really. So, everyone, how do we make sure that everyone has a turn and is also listened to? Quite often, you in particular, we can be distracted by noise and it can drown out other sound. What about when God speaks to us? Yeah? God's voice could be and often is drowned out by all the other noises in our lives. <laughs> no, Russell asked, am I saying that he's too noisy? I'd never say that, Russell. No, 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 no. But we need to help each other to listen, which in turn will help us to understand better. Today, while watching our online video, let's really listen to what is said and see if we can help each other to hear and know God more. Let's pray. We have come together into the presence of our Lord. So, let us quieten our hearts and minds. Put aside our concerns and distractions. Let us open ourselves to listen for God's voice, for the word God has for his people. Amen. Some of those things that can distract us can be the things that we have done wrong. And we need to give them to God and to say sorry. <coughs> yes. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent then and turn to God so that he will forgive your sins. As I read this prayer of confession, please join in with Russell with the words, We are sorry. <coughs> we are sorry. Let us pray. Lord God, for the times when we think we are better than others, we are sorry. For the times we have told lies, we, we are sorry. For the times we have joined in with others who are doing wrong, we are sorry. For the times we have shouted at our friends and family, <coughs> we are sorry. For the times when we have refused to apologise, <coughs> we are sorry. For the times when we've ganged up against others, <coughs> we are sorry. For the times when we were too busy with our own affairs to notice that other people needed help. <coughs> we are sorry. For these and all our other wrongs. <coughs> we are sorry. Amen. <coughs> 
Father God, we thank you that we don't have to earn your forgiveness. It is not based on how worthy we are. We are forgiven through Christ Jesus. It is by grace that our sins are forgiven. Amen. The reading today is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 43 to the end. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the, uh, in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to reflect this morning on some verses from the readings. From the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 10. The Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Speak, for your servant is listening. From Psalm 139, Lord, you have searched me out and you know me. And from the Gospel of John, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and he said to him, follow me. All these verses point to the fact that God knows us all, finds us and calls us to him. To do what though? So let me share these words that are part of the Journey in Faith course. There is an old Christian tradition that God sends each person into this world with a special message to deliver, with a special song to sing for others, with a special act of love to bestow. No one else can sing my song or offer my act of love. These are entrusted only to me. Powerful words indeed, but how do we respond? Well, one way is to look at some of the ways that, in which people have responded to God in the past. When Moses was called to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, he had lots of reasons why he didn't think the call was for him. He was scared that no one would believe that he'd been called, and he said that he couldn't do public speaking. So he had a genuine reluctance based on this idea that he wasn't gifted to carry out the task he'd been given. So through the power of God, though, he was able to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And his brother Aaron carried out the public speaking on his behalf. When Samuel was called, there was a gentle calling of his name going on in the night. He thought it was his teacher in the next room, but eventually he realised that it was God. Sometimes God calls us to do something through gentle nudging, an itch that needs to be scratched. Is there something that's been on your mind that you've not been able to respond to yet? When Jeremiah was called, he thought he was totally unsuitable. I'm only this or only that. And later on, he felt a compulsion to respond to God, something burning deep inside. When Ignatius of Loyola was called, he was lying injured, recovering from a battle injury. This was back in the 16th century. He saw two possible futures for himself, marrying and settling down, or becoming a priest. He imagined himself in both situations, looking at all the possibilities for the future. On the one hand, he saw short-term happiness, 
and on the other hand, he saw long-term peace with God. So he became a priest and eventually he founded the Jesuits. So he had imagined himself in a role over a period of time and observed how this might affect him in terms of emotion and feeling. Last week, we heard how John the Baptizer baptised Jesus. And in our baptism, we are named as we embrace a new life in Christ. Each of us, a beloved child, known to God. When Jesus called Simon, he changed Simon's name and called him Cephas, the rock. We know his name through the Greek for rock, Petros, Peter. The previous Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, points out that there is a close connection between being called to be and to be the bearers of our true names. That's a bit oblique and deep though, isn't it? So I like to think about it in terms of shoes. Well, I've got a wardrobe full of shoes. So I decided to be sensible when I bought some shoes for a wedding. I'll get some that I'll be able to wear again. Here they are. I wore them once and walked up the path in St Mary's churchyard and was crippled for the rest of the day. I had to wear slippers to the reception. There were sparkly slippers though. And I can still get in the handbag. I went shopping with my friend Janet in Great Malvern and I came away with some of lovely little red flatties. Here they are, my lovely little red flatties. They look so pretty and comfortable, even though they were a bit snug at half a size too small. I, they'll stretch, I thought, but they didn't. I still try them from time to time. I really should give them away. It's been 10 years now. And then for Christmas, a few years ago, John bought me these beautiful Doc Martin purple boots. I'd always wanted them and I absolutely love them, but I can't walk in them. It took me two months in the first lockdown for the blister on my bunion to heal after wearing them for just one day. Time and time again, I've bought shoes that I liked in the, that I like the look of in the hope that they would fit me, only to spend hours in agony along my bunion screaming and hobbling along like some old cart horse. Sometimes even slippers aren't comfortable. So shopping for shoes has turned into a little bit of a nightmare. And on the rare occasions I find a good fit, it feels really good. And I wear them until they drop to bits. I've currently got about two pairs of shoes that really, really fit and one pair of slippers. Nothing I can wear with a skirt though. So the point of that story, apart from offering a pair of hardly worn pale grey shoes, whoever wants them, is that there is a certain calling that fits me as there is for you too. It's no good trying to be something that we're not or just going for something that we like the look of. Wearing a mask or wishing we were like someone else who can wear fancier shoes. God is calling us all, each of us, by our names. And we are loved and valued as we are and who we are. The tricky bit is to discern what the calling might be. And believe me, I know this, the calling might change over time. This pandemic and lockdown could have been a time for many of us to rethink our calling, if we'd had time. Maybe we should find time. I think we can all help each other find our individual calling, something that we feel really fits us. It's all part of supporting each other in this Christian family. Maybe we should talk about it more. What do you think? I found a prayer that I'd like to end with and it was written on a gift tag and it seemed to strike a chord with the message today. God calling us all, each of us, by name. And God wants us to live to our true calling, not trying to fit into something that we're not. 
So let's pray. Gracious God, help me to be more gracious about some of the burdens I can't put down and to be brave about ditching the burdens I can. Help me to discern unexpected callings unique to me and to receive the confirmation from you I always need. Help me to live my life in a way that brings God's kingdom to fruition. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us come before God in prayer. Lord, we pray for your world. We pray for the many, many people struggling with COVID. We pray for comfort for them. We pray for protection. Many of us shielding and trying not to get COVID. And we pray for an efficient and swift distribution of the vaccine to us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the American people and its government. We pray for unity and for peace. We pray that the new government will be able to settle in and institute its manifesto and will manage to bring unity in that divided people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church around the world. We pray for many of us who are isolated or feel isolated. But we know you are with us. We pray that during this isolation, you will strengthen our walk with you. And you will teach us how to have fellowship in different ways, keeping us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our benefits. We pray for our churches. In particular, we pray for the renovation of St. Mary's Church Hall and all the work going on there. We pray for funding and for wisdom and to make best use of this fallow period. We pray for future services in our churches. We pray for wisdom and for courage about if and when and how to run them. We also pray for our upcoming Wednesday Bible study followed by our Lent course. We pray for these and also for the many Bible meetings, the prayer meetings that happen through the week. We pray you'll encourage others to join them we pray for your blessing and your spirit in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our friends, our families, our neighbours, those who are dear to us. We bring before you now, in the quiet of our heart, any issues that are there, looking for your word, and your peace. We take a moment in silence. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Feel free to join in at home. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before we have our peace, a prayer from the book of Hebrews. May the God of peace, 
who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, thanks for joining with us today. As we look towards next week, let our prayer be one of being open to hearing God's words afresh speaking to us in our lives. So let's finish with a, a final prayer. Christ be the centre of my mind and my heart. Christ be the centre of my thoughts and my words. Christ be the centre of my joy and my pain. Christ be the centre of my home and my journey. Christ be the centre of my peace and my turmoil. Christ be my inspiration and my guide. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.